So this week got some exciting news and I mean this news doesn't only impact me but it impacts all associated with me and um, the Poshmogosh group from business partners to labels to artists and this week after waiting for just over a month yeah it was just over a month the membership committee for the Music in Africa Foundation has approved my application to join them as an official member starting immediately. Now, I'm going to, <laughs> I was getting quiet up in my words there, but I'm going to go onto the website now for Music in Africa. I'm going to paste the link also within the description for you guys to go check it out and, you know, get yourself associated with it. As an artist, as a label, you can sign up for a free account. You can create your profile. It's an awesome platform to give you exposure and information that you desire and need in order to sustain yourself within the music industry within Africa. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through the points on what the mission is about for music in Africa. And as I go through those points, um, for those who know me personally and know my brand and know the Posh Mogosh Group and the Kinoise Consulting Agency, and what we're doing at Posh Mogosh Records and bridging the gap so we can leverage mainstream artists, their status uh, globally to build your career further. That's what the mandate is when it comes to all the future projects that's happening at Posh Mogosh Records. By being featured on one of these projects, you can leverage that to grow your career. Um, so when I read these points, you can sort of, you know, pick up by knowing me personally and what my brand is about on why I wanted to join Music in Africa as a member and have a seat at the table to be part of the future growth for the music industry, the music economy within the continent. Um, so on the website, Music in Africa Foundation is a non-profit organization that was formed on the 27th of July 2013 in Kenya. Uh, the foundation is officially registered in South Africa. The aims and objectives for the foundation is providing reliable and useful information that promotes the African music sector and all and its operators. Connecting and promoting exchange between music operators from or related to Africa, promoting and encouraging the creation of content by Africans about Africa or related to Africa. Improving the distribution accessibility and viability of such content. Promoting the spirit of entrepreneurship among the African music sector. I mean, that's one critical point that I focus on like a lot. The Kino as a consulting agency to flip the mindset of an artist to look at themselves in the mirror and say, look, I'm not only an artist, but I'm also an entrepreneur. And 80% of my time needs to go to being an entrepreneur within the music industry and 20% being an artist. Enhancing music uh, music education, once again, closely linked to what we're doing at the Kino as a consulting agency. Um, facilitating and promoting through research, development, and education, the use by professionals and audiences of current and future check Technologies, keyword day technologies going into the future with AI and AI in music, um, critical point. And when it comes to AI and it comes to technology tech, that's like, I would say, like at the top of my list. Um, okay, besides, you know, the conversion to entrepreneurship of artists, but focusing on technology and how you can leverage that and how you can keep a balance uh, between organic productions and AI productions. Um, I'll briefly touch on that in the podcast. Uh, something that I have just been busy with this week. I'll mention that to you guys. And the final point is providing one single and viable access point for all the above that links existing initiatives, services, and resources. So by the objectives and aims, this is why I want you to be part of the foundation, to be part of this, to have a seat at the table, to enhance the objectives and to contribute uh, to the continuous growth within the African music scene, especially when it comes to the independent space. And when you go onto this website and you see all these artists and members that are part of this, these are guys uh, that you won't generally know. Um, and it's just crazy to think how 
so many people just focus on the mainstream guys who get the bulk of the attention. Some artists in South Africa, or in Africa in general, my personal opinion, are just overrated. And there's sort of like a political mandate behind it. Uh, but there's a lot of talent out there. And this foundation is here with all its members to grow this, to grow their careers. And just like what I love to always say, so you can live your best life. So if you're an artist, if you're a label, please click the link below that will take you to, if you're an artist or label, of course, with the Africa, uh, that will take you to their website. You can create a login um, and have your profile on there so people can check you out depending what category you actually select yourself to be under. And of course, there's also a contact for your artist profile. So you know, someone wants to book you or so on, you know, you can contact. Um, if we go over to the main feed of the website, um, this gives you all the headlines, you know, on what's happening within the industry at the moment. Um, in Africa, It you will also get communications once you create an account of all the events that are happening within Africa, including award shows and opportunities for you to actually sign up to be like a contender within one of the awards in one of the categories. Um, opportunities for African musicians, that's the first thing you're going to see when you get on here. So yeah, do check it out. And, you know, for myself personally, what a pleasure. What a pleasure. I got so much gratitude for that. So on to the body of the podcast today. So just like last week, so as usual, I'm going to mention the top five uh, trends that's been happening within the music industry according to music business worldwide. And I'm going to dissect point two, which I'm going to mention to you shortly. I'm going to go into it, um, give you guys some advantages and disadvantages if this has to happen uh, within the DSPs, more specifically Spotify. So... Number one, nothing out of the ordinary music, sorry, Sony Music in talks to acquire Queen catalog in potential one billion deal. I've mentioned this several times. Um, we're living in this era of just acquisition, acquisition, acquisition. So just like at Posh Magosh Group, you know, start small with your acquisitions, gain shares in royalty income, shares in catalog, shares in songs. The opportunities are out there. And if you want to know how to navigate and how to go about it, please hit up the agency. So I'm not going to go into further detail with point one. Point two, which is what I'm going to come back to, is Sony Music Group boss Rob Stringer talks acquisitions, artificial intelligence, how music streaming services could start charging free users. So I'm going to come back to that. Number three, Hype sells 50 million stake in SM Entertainment, South Korea headquartered entertainment giant Hype has sold 50 million dollars worth of its shares to fellow K-pop company SM Entertainment. Not really going to go into that. Um, number four, interesting topic that's uh, coming through from last week. The DOJ, uh, Department of Justice within the United States, is suing to break up Live Nation, what exactly does the lawsuit aim to achieve and could the concert giant win? So after an 18 month investigation, the US Department of Justice has filed a civil antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation, owner of Ticketmaster, for what it says is monopolization and other unlawful conduct that thwarts competition in markets across the live entertainment industry. I did touch on this uh, last week. Uh, further detail is legal analysis said uh, the fact that the DOJ under the under then President Obama approved the merger in the first place in 2010 and came to another agreement over alleged monopolistic practices in 2019 means it could have a third hard time conference in the court today that breaking up Live Nation Ticketmaster is necessary the uh, necessary remedy to problems it alleges. Um, look, I honestly feel a live nation can get away with this. Are they in the space to actually monopolize like any other company would? Yes, of course, um, they are. But, you know, it's twofold. It's like, if they've done all the grind and all the hustle, 
to build up Live Nation in Ticketmaster and use that to their advantage for their business. Is it really wrong or right? There's like a dotted line there. Because like where I'm coming from is, you know, you are more than welcome to go out there and host your own live event and book any form of artist. But if the consumers decide to go through Ticketmaster or go to a Live Nation uh, concert, isn't that their choice? Um, don't forget where I'm coming from. It's like we still have the power of choice on which live event we actually want to go to. So, uh, you know, for me, just I'm just going to back up Live Nation on this one. I'm just going to back up Live Nation on this one. As far as the other unlawful conduct that thwarts competition, there's no detail about that that I can see. Um, you know, yeah. So let's see what comes of it. Comes of it. I will keep you guys updated. Uh, but you know, I'm just back in Live Nation because okay, let's look at South Africa for example. There is nothing stopping Poshmagosh Group, Poshmagosh Club events to host a massive outdoor festival if we have the financial backing, similar to an Ultra or similar to an H2O, with hardcore DJs from all around the world. We've got the financial backing. There's nothing really stopping me unless the the people behind Ultra or H2O, you know, have their people in their pockets to actually um, authorize the permits depending on where exactly you want to host the event. You know, that could be maybe a form of unlawful conduct. So, there's a specific venue, Live Nation approaches, you know, it's all good, they can do it. Another ven- another events company approaches, no, they can't. Could be that, you know, could be that. Uh, everyone is closely linked, especially when a company is live. So Live Nation being also on the S&P 500, um, you would most, most likely, like the top venues across the states or across the world, have like a major stake within Live Nation. So it's all like a win-win, you know, those things. So that's possibly what they could mean, my unlawful conduct, but I don't have those details. Me, I'm just spitballing here or what it could be. Uh, but it's coming to the top of my mind. But everything, everyone who's associated with the other is closely linked in some way. It's just the nature of the business nature of the world. It's like um, pharmaceutical companies have shares in food production companies. So how it is uh just put that out there completely irrelevant <laughs> to the music industry but you know it's always closely linked uh, it's if we could figure to go back now to acquisitions if okay i'm a label i've acquired shares in a music catalog i have royalty ownership in a track which we do at posh Mongosh group um i'm not exactly going to go and invest in like say 10% of a restaurant, like a standard restaurant takeaway. Doesn't complement what I do. You know, you get many diverse entrepreneurs who like, by the way, will say, okay, now I'm going to buy a restaurant. You know, that's because they want to grow their own personal portfolio, but not the business portfolio. Cool. But if you were to say, okay, invest and own 10% in a nightclub, that could complement Kino Isaac, Bosch Mogosh Group. But yeah. Uh, number five, also coming from last week, Suno Cook, Suno could get sued by the record business who's backing it with 125. Who's backing it with 125? Well, and I touched on this last week, and I want you guys as artists to go and explore Suno and other AI platforms that's out there. And there's a lot, but Suno is quite dope. Now, for those who follow me on social media, um, you would know about the Britney project that I've been working on since last year. And I'm on the verge of releasing her first single. And, you know, it all falls under the NFT Britney project. So, you know, I've been playing around with Suno and so on. And it's quite phenomenal the things that you actually can do on it. You know, it's human. Like, um, can they get sued? Yeah, possibly they can, but can you stop it? No, you can't. 
uh, especially with NFT projects. Like I feel for NFT projects like myself using Suno, is there's a lot of value in that. Uh, but if I just want to like, let's just say I'm a guy working as an accountant and I love listening to music, but I'm not exactly a musical artist, so I'm a consumer. You know, I go on Suno, I type in a few words and all of a sudden I have music and then I release it. Are you truly really an artist? In my opinion, no. Uh, but if I'm using it as an artist and I'm keeping the balance of 50%, I'm using it specifically for an NFT project. For me, no harm in that. Um, so it's actually twofold, you know. Should accessibility be available to everyone or should there be like an authorization process? There should be like a committee set up within Suno, any AI platform to say, okay, if you want to use Suno, you need to submit the details on why you want to use Suno. And let go through the proof of process uh, for a market that is already flooded, like flooded, flooded, flooded. Now we're going to get flooded with tracks that don't really come from music-related artists or personnel within the economy. So let's see what comes with that. But honestly, for me, using Suno has been great been uh, mind-blowing for me and as i always say i said it last week as well i posh my gosh um we are keeping 50 percent balance between traditional and ai we are not going to be a critic of it and say oh no we're not going to use ai because we're all about doing it the traditional way like what i said last week about values and about principles yes all those things do matter i'm not saying it doesn't uh but in order for you to be you know visible sustain yourself in the years to come in the music industry you have to leverage your business to ai and start using the tools as well and just explore for yourself because ai music the share the market share is just continuing to grow okay so we are now going to scroll back to two which I mentioned, Sony Music Boss, uh, Rob Stringer talks acquisitions, artificial intelligence, and how music streaming services could start charging free users. So the article goes on to say that Sony Music Chairman Rob Stringer is setting his sights on a new monetization goal, getting the music streaming services to start charging for their ad-supported subscription tiers. During his presentation on May 30th, Stringer suggested that DSP start charging a modest fee on their fee free subscription tiers. Um, he, I quote, while free tiers attract billions of monthly users, their poor contribution to streaming monetization means their primary purpose is to convert users into paying subscribers. At Sony Music, we think every, everyone is willing to pay something for access to virtually the entire universe of music. Um, when you look at the world, not everyone is willing to pay, mainly because in your poorer economies, People can't afford to pay. So do we really want to take this privilege, uh, which is like go to them, away from them? But why I've come back to this article is because I have put together the advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to use Spotify as an example. So you could be someone listening to this podcast right now who has a Spotify account, but you're still on the free tier, which means it's ad-supported. You can listen to about like, three tracks and then the ad comes on for 30 seconds and then you know you can continue listening to music for about another two three tracks of course if you listen to any form of podcast um non-noise music meaning like any sort of meditation you know there's no interruptions those things are not are really monetized but music yes is um so i'm use spotify and of course you know tier go to premium and what's like 60, 70 bucks, around about 69 um, per month for premium bits. There is no ads, sort of like how YouTube works and so on. So I'm going to give you, it's twofold what I'm going to give you right now. I'm going to give you the advantages and disadvantages for Spotify. And then I'm going to give you the advantages and disadvantages for artists. So advantages for Spotify is number one, increased revenue. Charging for the free tier could significantly boost Spotify's revenue as millions of users would transition to paying customers. Number two, enhance content investment. More revenue means more resources to invest in exclusive, exclusive content, podcasts, and improved features. Number three, reduction in advertisements. Pay tiers typically have few ads or none at all. Um, 
providing a better user experience. Question is, if we're not going to run ads, um, that's also like a major source of income for Spotify. For better user experience. Um, a paid tier might encourage Spotify to enhance user experience with higher quality streaming and additional features. Higher artist payouts. When more paying users, Spotify could potentially pay higher royalties to artists and rights holders. Customer loyalty. Paying customers may paying customers may be more loyal and less likely to switch to competing services. Number eight, improved user data. Paying uh, customers provide more reliable and consistent data for Spotify to analyze and improve its services. Number nine, ad-free experiences. Users will enjoy ad-free experience, which can be a major selling point. Yeah. Well, of course I agree. That's why it's there. <laughs> Ten, reduced reliance on advertisers. Spotify would be less dependent on advertisers and less vulnerable to fluctuations in the advertising market. Are they really dependent or do they love it because it does generate a lot of revenue? The disadvantages of Spotify would be, number one, user-based production. Charging for the free tier could lead to a significant drop in users who are unwilling to pay. Number two is competitor advantage. Competitors offering free tiers could attract Spotify's form of free, free users, increasing their market share. Number three, negative public perception. Users might perceive this move negatively, feeling that they are being forced to pay for a service that was once free. Four, market saturation. The music streaming market is already competitive and adding a cost could deter new users from joining. Loss of ad revenue. While well, subscriptions uh, bring in more stable income, the loss of ad revenue from free users might affect some of the gains. Number six, barriers for emerging markets in developing countries where disposable income is lower, charging for the free tier could severely limit user acquisition. So what I said before went into this. Number seven, piracy. Sorry, piracy increase. Users who are unwilling to pay might turn uh, to illegal streaming or download services. Number eight, customer backlash. Long-term users of free tier might feel alienated, earlier alienated, and react negatively on the social media, on social media and other platforms. Number nine, limited trial access. But our free to, free to tier uh, potential users might not get a chance to try the service before committing to a paid subscription. And I got this point here because it's so true. Like any platform that I start using today, um, I love it when, you know, there is a free account because then you can actually experience it for yourself and be like, okay, cool, this can work. Uh, maybe not, and you just leave it. But having a free tier gives you, as a user, that experience to make a decision whether this is going to work long-term or not. Number 10, technical support burden. A large number of paying customers might require more excessive customer service and technical support, increasing operational cost. So those are the advantages and disadvantages for Spotify if they have to charge for free, uh, sorry, charge the free tier. Meaning, you know, free tier, you could pay like, uh, you know, if to work it out now, okay, I'm just going to stay in rands here, like what, 20, 30 rand a month. Okay, so these are the disadvantages and advantages for music artists and labels if Spotify to charge or any DSP had to charge um, the free tier. Number one is loss of exposure. Charging for the previously free tier could result in a significant drop in user numbers, reducing the exposure artists get from streaming. Two, fair and accessibility in markets with lower disposable incomes, potential fans might, uh, might be unable to afford subscriptions, limiting artists reach and there's so many people in poor countries who adore artists that you know are mainstream on spotify that they'll you know never get an opportunity not now at least or in present time you never know what can happen in the future to see their favorite artists live uh, so streaming them on spotify could be the only means and if you don't take that away from them knowing that they can't afford it they don't see that it is morally right 
Number three, risk of privacy. Users are willing to pay turn to piracy, leading to a loss of revenue for artists and labels. Uh, decrease listener base. Reduce user base means fewer streams overall, which can negatively impact an artist's visibility and popularity metrics. Five, market shift. Competitors offering free tiers could attract more listeners, shifting market dynamics away from Spotify and potentially reducing revenue for artists on Spotify. Six, public relations challenges. Artists and labels might face backlash if fans perceive the change as greedy or unfair, affecting their public image. Increased pressure for hits. With a smaller paying audience, there might be more pressure on artists to produce hit songs to ensure high engagement and revenue. Barriers for independent artists. Independent artists who rely on free to build their initial fan base might struggle to gain traction in a pay-only environment. Reduce promotion opportunities. Fewer users uh, might mean fewer opportunities for promotional placements and playlist inclusions, which are crucial for artists' growth. Number 10, impact on emerging markets. Artists and labels looking to expand into emerging markets might find it harder to grow the audience if potential fans can't afford subscriptions. So any DSP needs to balance these factors, which could be crucial for them could be crucial for artists, could be crucial for labels to navigate this changing landscape. So I completely 1000% um, disagree with Rob Stringer, chairman of Sony Music. No, this is a no-go when you listen to the advantages and disadvantages um, for yourself, you can make the decision. This is just like another act of greediness by one of the mainstream labels. So completely, completely disagree with this point. I understand what he says about, you know, you're paying for the entire universe of music, but universe, I mean, music is like an international language of love, of kindness, of unity. So what we're going to eliminate 1 million people from listening, just putting a ball figure out there, 1 million people from listening to music that inspires them, motivates them, that really gets them out of their darkest challenges that they're facing in their personal life or they're facing within their economy, not on. People have a right to music from any artist, any time. So yes, keep a free, uh, free tier. Yes, have ads in there. It's fair. Because the money you're losing from the streams you could be gaining if you were charging free tier, you get getting compensated from the ads. So it balances out. It's a win. So DSPs should not allow something like this to happen. And that's my opinion. All the information will be in the description for you to check out. And hope this was insightful. And please do check out Music in Africa. If you're an artist or label, set up an account get yourself associated with it. And uh, yeah, let's unite. Let's unite through music. I will catch you next week. Peace out. Oh yeah, before I go, the new Unlocking Icons, the recording will be taking place this week and it's Whitney Houston. That's what's up. That's what's up. Peace out.